This is small, this is tiny, and it feels really good to have it again in my hands. Today we're going to talk about the Fuji X100V, as you might have figured by now, and we're gonna dive into some street photography, some testing, some review, see what are the differences between this guy, the X100F, X100T, X100S, X100, what I like, what I don't, and we're gonna do it right now after the intro. Okay, here we are. Today we're testing this guy, the X100V. I just cannot wait to do this review and to show you guys what I think about it. All right, so before we start, I will tell you the joke that I have missed in the last two episodes. This is utterly lame. And uh, I wanna thank Patrick for reminding me. I'm gonna put his Instagram down below so you can go check it out. And his joke for this episode is, a young couple fly going by plane on honeymoon. They wanted to fly United, but the stewardess wouldn't let them. <laughs> There you go, that was the joke for today. And now, let's dive into the video with this little guy. Let's do it! One thing that bothered me a lot is that there's no button to switch between the uh, LCD and the OVF EVF uh, right off the bat, so you have to go into menus to change that. I'm sure you can map that somewhere, but it's a little bit annoying that you cannot access directly compared to the X100F, which I liked a lot. Now we're going to go shoot a little bit of uh, Street photography, there isn't a lot of people because as you might know, we're in the middle of the COVID-19 right now, so it's a little bit interesting in terms of uh, taking photos in the street. There isn't a lot of people, but we're anyways going to go take some photos. Off we go. Another big improvement over the previous model or series, the 100F, is the fact that you have a flip-out screen in the back. Uh, that flip-out screen is very useful to take some shots from the, from the waist. That avoids having to every time pull it up to your eye or to go down on your knees or to try to figure out a way and an angle to uh, get your shot. It also allows you to be more candid, like if you're in a wedding, for example, or if you're in a, you know, some reception or you want to uh, to catch someone without having the actual attention of the person. You can just use the flip out screen, which makes it way, way easier uh, to get your shot. One other thing that I really, really enjoy is the fact that there is an ND filter. That ND filter is now four stops versus three for the rest of the X100 series. And uh, that extra stop in, in a couple of cases helped me because I wanted to shoot wide open at F2 and uh, that was not possible otherwise. And that extra stop was actually very useful. Also, if you want to do photography such as a waterfall or things that are in movement during the day, bright daylight, that's, uh, that's an extra little help to get those stops of light off um, the way. So now let's uh, keep going. We're gonna shoot a little bit more and uh, see what cool shots we can get here in the streets of Lausanne. Like all the other generations, the shutter is a leaf shutter, which uh, makes it extremely silent, practically unhearable. So when you want to take candid shots of uh, people or something, you're not gonna get toasted right away because you don't hear the super loud shutter closing and taking the shot. In my opinion, that makes the X100 series a great street photography camera. So if you ask me if this camera is good for shooting weddings or anything where you want to be discreet, uh, I tell you yes, yes, and yes. Is this camera up to the hype? Absolutely. Can you uh, buy one of these cameras to go traveling, go on holidays or do any of that stuff? You definitely can. The x 4 sensor that they put into this camera now uh, makes a huge difference in terms of speed, buffer, um, obviously image resolution because Beyond the fact that we went from 24 to 26 megapix, uh, that to me is not the biggest difference because two million pixels is not something that's going to make a huge difference in terms of uh, image quality and resolution. But the new sensor allows you to really get great images. They're a little bit softer, meaning not as harsh as the third generation sensor. So that's something I appreciate a lot. Uh, one other thing that I noticed that when you open it at F2, it is still very soft when doing close-up shots on uh, objects or people. 
and that uh, that is something that I would like to see improved in the next version. Okay, one of the things that I really enjoyed uh, and that I saw an improvement on, it's a little detail, but it makes a huge difference in my opinion, is the fact that um, the ISO wheel now here, when you lift it, it stays up and you can just turn it to set the ISO that you want and put it back down. This, for those that don't know, it's a huge improvement over the X100F and before where you had to keep it lifted up and twisted. That was a bit of a, of a hustle when you had only one hand available or you had a lot of things like in a wedding, for example, I remember having to twist, having my X-T2 on the other side or having another camera and having a little bit of a hard time. Same thing for the X-Pro2 that had that system. I don't know if the X-Pro3 actually fixed that too, but uh, that is a huge uh, improvement. Uh, also, you can set it to C mode here, uh, which is great for compensation. You can go up to 5 or minus 5 uh, compared to the X100F. That's if I don't air two stops difference. So that's great for auto uh, exposure. And overall, I believe the lens uh, actually looks a little bit better. It got a little bit improved in terms of quality and resolution. So uh, that's something uh, great that I like to, to see uh, Fuji improving. Despite the fact that the autofocus is really good, um, I like to shoot in manual mode, which is here on the side, and um, set the focus point close to me, about one, one and a half meters, so it's easier when someone comes closer, I can take the shot and get them in focus without having to have the, the autofocus trying to find uh, where to focus <laughs> because I missed a lot of shots like that so that's a little tip for street photography for you guys okay so we're at the end of this video I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, as much as I did I hope this uh, helped you a little bit to uh, see some examples and shots of the X100V for streets for buildings for people for any any of that uh, good stuff um, if you're hesitating between getting an F or a V, uh, to be honest, I still think that the X100F has a lot in the guts. Uh, the X100V, obviously, it's a, it's a big improvement. If you have an X100T or X100S or before, obviously, I highly suggest that you get the X100V. But otherwise, uh, in my opinion, it's not a must to upgrade as of right now. All right, take care. If there's anything you want me to talk about or any more data about this little guy here, don't hesitate to hit me up in the comment section down below. Subscribe, like, share, the whole nine yards. You know how it goes. And uh, see you soon. Cheers.